Welcome to your tutorial on regression analyses. First, we will look at checking our assumptions. Okay, we have four variables in our SPSS window. We have ID, gender, course comfort, and hours of prep. So for this regression analysis, we're just going to focus on hours in prep and course comfort. These are two variables that are measured at the interval ratio level. And we're interested in knowing whether hours of prep uh, predicts students' comfort with the course. So before we can proceed with our regression, we do need to check our assumption of linearity. And if you recall, we do that through uh, the chart builder and by looking at the scatter plot. So if we click on chart builder here, we're going to click on scatter dot and then just select the basic scatter plot. And then we are going to put hours of prep on the x-axis because it is our predictor variable. So unlike in correlation where it doesn't really matter where we put it, in regression it does. So x, the predictor, absolutely has to go on the x-axis and then the outcome variable goes on the y-axis. So once this is set up we can click OK and then we get our, um, our scatter plot. So what we're looking for is something, as long as it's a big cloud or a jumble of scores, it's fine. What we're looking for are, or we want to make sure we don't have any underlying patterns. So something that would go like this or something that would go like that. And in this case, this looks pretty linear. It looks like we have a downward trend here. And actually, before we even run the analysis, um, we can actually ask SPSS to put a line of best fit through the data. So that'll actually be our regression line. So you can do that by right clicking, or sorry, double clicking on the chart, there we go. And then we are gonna double click once it's open, or sorry, right click once it's open, and then you're gonna select this option, add fit line at total. So it'll give you a few options here, and we're interested in a linear fit line. So you can ask for the mean of y, uh, you can ask for quadratic or cubic um, lines, however, we really just want the linear line. So we, after that, we can click close, and we'll notice that SPSS has fit this line right through our data here, and has also given us the R square, so the effect size um, of this line here. And when we actually run the analysis, we'll check and see how accurate it was, but you'll see that it will be very accurate. So we can close this, and just looking at it, we can already see that you know there is definitely a linear relationship here. Um, I should note that. SPSS will always fit a line, so uh, no matter what your data looks like, it will find the line of best fit. Um, however, if you recall, if there isn't really much of a linear relationship, you're going to end up getting something that's just close to the mean of y. So it'll look more like a straight line like this, and it'll be situated around the mean of the y variable. Next, we'll look at running a simple regression in SPSS. Okay, so now that we've confirmed that we have a linear relationship between our two variables, we can now proceed with the actual analyses. So we'll go to Analyze, Regression, and you'll see here that there's a lot of different options, but we're really just interested in the linear regression. And this is where you can do both simple and multiple regression, and this week we're just looking at simple. So we click Linear here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We are going to put are, oops, now I've forgotten which one's the independent variable. Sorry, we're going to put hours of prep on the independent line and course comfort on the dependent line. Now in the options, um, we can, we don't really need any of these things for now. However, we can ask, um, we can ask um, SPSS to give us our descriptive statistics for both variables. Under plots, this is where you can actually also create a, um, a scatter plot right from here, but we will look at this next week with multiple regression. And then these are some options for looking at outlier cases and error. However, we won't be using that in this course. And then again here, options for missing data. So this time, now that we're doing regression, we have the option of also adding mean replacement. 
However, um, the, the defaults usually are just, again, like last week, using list-wise or pair-wise deletion. Uh, if you're doing simple regression, these will be the same because we're only looking at two variables. However, once we start doing multiple regression, uh, that's when this one will come into play. And if you select pairwise, it'll only exclude participants on the certain pairs of data. And we can just ignore the bootstrapping tab altogether. So once everything here is selected, we can click OK. And essentially, we have our first box, which gives our descriptive statistics. So we have the mean of course comfort and the mean of hours of preps and we have the standard deviations for both and the number of participants for both. Uh, we also have the correlation between the two variables um, which we don't really need to look at this because it's not part of this analysis and you'll see here that this correlation coefficient is reflected right here under the model summary tab. So that's the co direct correlation between both variables. Again this gets a little bit more interesting when you have more variables for multiple regression, but for simple regression, this value here is going to be the same as this value here and this value there. And I'll explain all that in a second. Okay, so let's move away from here. So here are the actual results of our regression analysis. These four uh, variables here, or sorry, tables here. So the first one is always going to give us a summary of what was run. So we have a dependent variable, which is course comfort, and we only ran one model where we used hours of prep as the independent variable. Next, we have our model summary. So this is where we get the R, which is the correlation coefficient between both variables, which you already saw here. And then we have the R square, which is our effect size. Uh, an adjusted R square, which takes into consideration some of the error in the model. We won't worry about this and then our standard error of estimate. So really the two important things to take from this table are the first two right here, so the correlation coefficient and the R-square. Next we have our ANOVA table. So this here is an assessment of how well overall the model fits the data. And again, we're looking for a significant value here. If this were not significant, it would mean that our data is not very good and that we don't really have a linear relationship between the two variables. In our case though, uh, this f value is quite large and we do have a linear relationship because this value here is much smaller than 0 0.05. So since uh, this is good to go, we can actually look at the last table which gives us the values um, for the predictors. So this table here has two rows and basically it's giving us the information for the constant as well as our predictor variable. So right here, this, these unstandardized coefficients are equivalent to the values that you would plug into your regression equation. So this here is the constant, which is A, and then this here is B. So basically if you were to write out the regression equation, we would have predicted y is equal to 29 minus 4.39x. So that's where we get those values from. We also have the standard error of both of these estimates. And then right here we have the standardized coefficients. So if you recall, if you were to use the standardized coefficients, uh, there is no constant because con the constant is always going to be equal to zero at this point. And if you also recall when we have simple regression, the standardized uh, beta coefficient is going to be equal to the correlation coefficient. So if we look here, we have there, and it comes back again there. So this is true for, uh, what was I going to say? This is true for uh, uh, simple regression. And then next we have our t-tests, which are telling us whether or not these values here are significantly different than zero, which is telling us whether or not we have a linear relationship or not. So if we recall, we do not care about whether the constant is significantly different than zero or not. However, we do want our um, predictor variable or to be significant, or to, sorry, we want B to be significantly different than zero. And in this case, we have a T value of negative 11.38, and it's much smaller than 0 0.05, so we're okay here. Uh, in simple regression, 
if this ANOVA table is significant, your predictor variable is also going to be significant. So you can just, you'll, if once this is good, you'll know this is good to go as well. Uh, the constant may or may not be significantly different than zero, but again, it really doesn't matter for a simple regression or any regression for that matter. Okay, so just one last thing I want to show you is when we had asked, uh, when we'd asked SPSS to fit the best line, the line of fit here, um, we noticed that we have a constant, or sorry, a constant of about 27, 28 it looks like, and that we have a negative uh, slope here on our regression line. So if we go down here to where we actually tested that, we can see the constant is equal to 29, and that our slope is negative 3 point, or sorry, 4.39. So if we look here, that looks pretty right. Okay, we can see that as we get to zero, so it's difficult, the x-axis isn't perfect here, because if you notice the distance between one and two is this big, but then right here, we're not quite at zero. Zero should be more here. So if we were to continue the line, that looks much more like 29 there. Okay, it's just this isn't actually at zero right now. And then it does look like that for every one unit of x, y is going down about four points. Okay, so the line matches what we found down here.